Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. Welcome back to Castlevania Lords of Shadow. I would like to mention, Draco stuck the cross in the bleached bone of the Draco Lich to prevent him from falling down. Um, <clears throat> these bones aren't really bleached, though. They're, they've still got some ch chunks on them. Oh yeah, I also wanted to mention, this isn't made of bones, and I don't really know if that counts. They mentioned that these are created out of fossils, right? Well, the thing is, is that how a fossil is made is that bone is hard enough to make an imprint in rock. And then um, bone will still eventually decay, though, and when bone goes away, it'll leave an impression. That's one way of making a fossil. But another way is that certain rocks will actually fill in the cracks of a porous bone. You know, a porous bone structure. Hello? Yeah, alright, cool. Uh, yeah, certain things will fill in the crack of a porous bone structure. Or not the cracks, just the holes. Because a bone is naturally porous. Um, one way to actually tell if what you're holding is a rock or a bone is to lick it. Uh, and if it is porous, then it's a bone. If it's smooth, then it's a rock. Other porous rocks you can identify by sight. But if you're not sure if what you have is a rock or a bone, lick it. This is why sometimes you see geologists... Ah, oh, fuck. See geologists licking things. Also to test something as salt. You know? Like that guy in Star Wars. Uh, but anyway, the point is, is that fossils are not bones. They're rocks. And I don't know if you can turn a fossil into a... Uh I don't know if you can turn a fossil into a lich. Into a zombie creature. Damn it. Alright, is this going to give me a checkpoint or am I going to be... I think this is a checkpoint. Yeah, alright. Cool. I will say, Shadow of the Colossus is so iconic and, and cool of a game and unique and special and awesome and fun and great. And I feel like there's a lot of people who could have, like, ripped off Shadow of the Colossus, but, like, I feel like most people had a lot of respect for that game. And Shadow of the Colossus did so many things new and interesting that they wouldn't bother trying to replicate it unless they had something for real interesting for them. And so, I do kind of like all the Colossi fights in this game. I understand that they are very derivative. Oh, fuck. Thought it was over. The... One thing is that it's literally just a stock prompt that says hold RT to hold on. And it's kind of... It's not very engaging is the thing, you know? That's one of the things about the Colossi fights that make them a little weak. Because the camera is pulled so much further back, and because the controls are so much more action-y compared to Shadow... It kind of feels a little bit, um, you know, weak to hold on. Because normally climbing is just uncharted climbing, and there's no real challenge to it. You just kind of go. You know? All right. And see, it's literally like a stock Xbox prompt. Like a classic 360 button prompt. Like at least when like God of War needs to show you a prompt, it makes a cool, like shiny, smoky, flaming black prompt instead of like default PlayStation buttons. 
And in, in um, God of War 4, they I think they even have, like, they've spruced it up further, and they have cool Norse PS4 prompts. Okay. Oh, you just hit square, or X. That's weird, frankly. All right, come on. That's another thing. I kind of feel like um, the hold RT to grip stuff. I feel like some of those are a bit time wasty, you know. Oh, this is cool. A little transition to a different uh, zone. Granted, I think at some point we're gonna run out of atmosphere, right? That's how it works. Okay, Gabriel is a little too dark. I will say, it's not shown up in a couple areas, but on the tan and browns here, the dark red does not have enough definition when the camera's really pulled back. One thing that was always a big part of the... Uh, I don't like Ego Raptor, but sometimes he will have a good opinion. And by sometimes, I mean like 10 years ago. <laughs> no. Um, hey, is this muscle or bone? Is this canvas? Those things are flexing. I can see them moving and shifting. But one thing that he comments on for the original Castlevania is, is that Castlevania 2 has a whole lot of green in its color palette, and Simon himself is red. He's wearing this iconic red armor that's really cool. Oh my god, I missed it. I wasn't even looking. Damn. Yeah, Simon himself has this iconic red armor, and so against the green, he pops pretty well. Now granted, he doesn't pop as good as he does in the initial game, but in the first game, he has orange armor, and the game has a great deal of blue in it. So he pops out very much because there's a complementary colors. Um, in the first game, he has a very bright color scheme, which is nice and fun. Look, we made this cutscene, and even if you play perfect, you're going to see him fall one way or another. Oh, that's fun. That's awesome. I love that his abilities are getting used in cutscenes. The thing is, is that in a lot of Castlevania stuff, you get you, you can get those in uh, a loose order, which means that they can't necessarily plotline-wise assume the player will have something specific, especially in um, Aria games where things are random drops. Oh, whoops. Should have gone here and then down. Oh, God, I just realized I forgot what I was talking about. Damn it. I was doing pretty good, though. <laughs> okay. Oh. But yeah, um, I I, lo I, lo I like the cutscenes in this game are actually really good. There's a lot of cool stuff in here that I enjoy seeing. All right. This is also a pretty cool design. Also, there are tiny little hints of things that are lore in this, you know? But they don't go very far with it. Like the idea that like, oh yeah, there are all this ancient technology in these golems and shit. All of that is because, oh, there's ancient things in the world that have now died off, and what in the holy hell are you talking about? And, like, that's super cool, but we don't get to see it. We just get to see some ruins for ruins' sake. And that's kind of it. Um, and that's a little lame, I will say. Um, oh, game's freaking out again. Come on. There we go. Yeah, now we're going to get our big God of War fight where we're on a little platform and then we have big guys next to us. What is this? Charging up his Godzilla laser. Nope, just gas. Ooh, gnarly. Okay, let me in there. 
Oh, we interrupted him. That's cool. Ah, uh, yeah, I was talking about um, complementary colors. And so, one thing about Alucard is that Alucard is black, and you can change the color of his cloak to be whatever you want it to be. Um, and then what's more, he's black with white hair. And so, in many cases, he actually doesn't stand out, but he has such a unique motion because of the flow of his hair when he's running and his hair is bouncing and his cape is flapping along with him, that you can usually follow uh, his movement on the screen very well, um, and you don't need to have him pop out as much. You know, in every, ca in every video game ever, it should be immediately, excruciatingly honest, obvious, who you are, who you're playing as. You should be able to tell that no matter what, second one. So what now? Do I have, the, like, the touch of the death? See, the gauntlet was the only one we actually didn't get from the three Lords of Shadow. The gauntlet was from someone else. The gauntlet was from that random golem guy, so... I guess it makes sense that we would get, like, a, uh, uh, all of our real powers from it, and to upgrade our gauntlet again is kind of... I guess that makes sense. But yeah, and then Soma, instead of having white hair, black... White hair, white shirt, and black uh, coat... Soma has white hair, white coat, black shirt. And so that black on white really helps them stand out. Um, I actually... Let me minimize the game here. This is my actual lock screen, and I want to talk about it for a sec. This was painted with gouache, um, with, with really mushy paint, and you can even see the texture of, of the paint if you look really closely. And this is the Japanese cover of Symphony of the Night, expanded out. And you can see that there's not a lot of diversity in color in it. There's white... Silver, gray, whitish gray, white silver, black, dark gray, and then yellow. Brass, bronze, gold, yellow, and then some browns. It's a very uninteresting color choice, but the beauty of it and the austerity of it and how grim and serious it is works so well it's so beautiful and i mean ayame kojima's art is just wow she's an amazing artist an absolutely fantastic painter and the art that she put together for this is beautiful that's why it's my um my my desktop background because like god look at it it's so good and and you know alucard's drab color choices don't really hurt the gameplay too much because you actually have Oh, final fight. Wow, yeah. Oh, these two are DLC. I don't think I'm going to do them. Um But yeah, the the last two are actually maybe I will do them. Uh the last two are just DLC. And now the final battle is come. I love is come Marie as opposed to has come. For you, my friend. Good poetic she choice. She knows what you have done. She knows everything. Marie has hoped all I can't believe I started this LP in, in what, the world, April? And here you are, on the brink of it. You stand upon a knife edge. She has kept faith in you despite everything. Now you must fulfill your destiny, and the truth will out. I will help you, old friend. I will be with you in this, your moment of victory. There should be a comma in between this and your... In this, comma, your moment of victory. But yeah, so there's been a lot of really good um, art for Castlevania produced, and this extends to even the very simple sprite art evident in the first game. Oblivion. Sempiterna, Daemonis. All right, let's complete the God Mask. I feel like when you have three fourths of something, you can pretty much figure it out from there, right?
But yeah, Gabriel does have a very good design, and his red is pretty good. But there are a few things where I feel like he could have been made to pop a little more, you know? Congratulations. You have done well, my friend. I see you have united the powers. Excellent. I'm going to turn this up. No end this. Once and for all, come. Yes. Let's bring an end to this charade. Finally, it is time for the truth. Let us remove our masks. Hey, it's that mask that was in that earlier cutscene when uh, Gabriel thought that he killed that girl. I think so. What? You! You are the lord of the necromancers! The final lord! Now you begin to understand! Yes, Gabriel! It was I who cast the spell that separated the earth from the heavens! I knew this would force my brothers and sister in heaven to contact the order here on earth! The prophecy was their little ray of hope in the darkness. We lords of shadow, as you call us, have been impotent for far too long. Fixed in an uneasy truce for many centuries, each possessing our share of the power, but each unable to have mastery over the others. Until now. I grew so tired of these years so, yeah. of proliferation. You can see that he's uh, getting he's, he's getting more venomous and, and rabid, and that's why Gabriel is cooperate with the others. That's why Patrick Stewart's running around killing guys. To see you know? the potential in the power we held. If only it were combined. I desired that ultimate power and was prepared to probe the very depths of hell in search of knowledge to acquire it. I fought hordes of demons and became strong. Then a force so vast and terrible entered into me, expanding my knowledge of the dark arts until it reached unimagined heights. All I needed was someone to restore the luminous power of the spirits according to the prophecy, and you have been the perfect dupe. Of course, I couldn't arouse their suspicions that it was I who desired the power for my own. No, I used the prophecy as my cover. And you, my shining knight. I will not allow you to stand in my way, Zobek. I'm sure you won't. But you really have no say in the matter, my dear friend. I could quite easily kill you for your insolence. But fortunately, there is no need. What do you mean? The gauntlet will do it for me. Oh, and also the only one we didn't get from a Lord of as Shadow. As I told you. Dark power is my dominion, forged in the pits of hell, no less. There was just the small matter of the child and her protector. But you came through with flying colors. <laughs> I needed your strength of will and courage to complete the quest, but I couldn't risk you becoming too powerful. I needed to control you at the end, once you had murdered them. I knew you would never be able to challenge me whilst wearing it. Poor little Claudia. Such a sweet thing. No. You have exceeded even my wildest expectations, killing and butchering your way to victory. There is a terrible darkness in you, my friend. Your burning desire to resurrect your darling Marie has blinded you to it. As you slept, I was able to influence you with this mask but even i did not foresee the beast that lay within that's always it a villainous concept that i like easy to make you kill them your penchant for murder and death were insatiable you just needed a little nudge and off you would go in search of the one thing that could bring her back yes gabriel now you finally understand it was you who murdered your wife. Does that even no, make any sense? You lie! 
bastard! Search your soul, Gabriel. You know it to be true. Literally I was worried paraphrasing Darth Vader there. Search your feelings to you at the lake. True. But it seems she had a false hope that even a killer such as you could redeem himself and save the world. Even the child, Claudia, could see her own demise at your hands. Is it and weird to call her a child? Because isn't she like an immortal being? you to the bitter end. Glorious, isn't it? God himself sees you for what you are. A cold-blooded murderer. Beyond redemption? Beyond hope. Ah! Ah! Yeah, conceptually, I love the idea of a woman Let me free you who, like, of your heavy oh. burden. Goodbye, old friend. Who is super evil and is trying to get someone else to be evil with him. And then they are blown away by how evil that guy actually is. They're like, oh, man. You're for real. You know, like this is a this is a Lord of Shadow, but he is stunned at how readily and venomously we attack, and he's pleased by it, to be sure. <laughs> Hail, mighty Zelbeck. Who's that? Who? I remember that evil force that entered him. I came to you in the void. I granted you knowledge and power. Power that you could never have obtained on your own. Surely you haven't forgotten. In fact, I planted the idea for this whole elaborate ruse into your tiny mind in order to serve my own higher purpose. I no longer need your assistance. The power is now mine. We must have weakened him in that fight. Or the big guy's even stronger and scarier. -er. Hell gave him some underpants, huh? Father, I come for you. Before the end, you will bow down to me. Gabriel. All right. Final Fantasy: The Spirits Within. No. Yeah, the idea that Gabriel, even after all of this carnage, is still motivated by good, solely, wholly, purely good. That's pretty cool. I like that. It is your time, Gabriel. Don't be afraid. Like, if somebody puts an evil mind control mask on you, they stop the chrono on him, basically. Get away from him. Don't If somebody puts an evil mind control mask on you and they have you. You cannot have it! You know, kill your wife. I'm not gonna blame you for that, you know? If you take him, we are all lost. Darkness will triumph and there will never, ever be peace or hope. We will be trapped here forever. Don't you see? We must grant him the power to go will back. Will he free us? Will we see the light that was promised? I believe in him. His heart is pure. He is our last hope. Our only hope. She's got that hairstyle that makes it look like she stuck a beaver tail to her head. It is your time again. <laughs> Don't be afraid. Come to Isn't it too human? I 
a neckbeard? Damn, dude. Clean that up. It's ugly. Neckbeards look good on no one. I'm so... Okay, as a teenager, I was so afraid of having a neckbeard that I would, like, cut my hair, like, way up here, right up on my chin. And so I would have my jawline, and then anything underneath it would have no hair. And sometimes I still do cut my hair like that, just, you know, just to keep it off my neck, but... So, he has abandoned you, too. So be it. Join me. I will love you more than he. Who is this mysterious man, though? I was adored once, above all others. I, too, didn't deserve to be cast out. Abandoned. Now you know what that feels like, don't you? Hate can bring us back. Give us strength. Uh, Embrace so it. Skinny, it is what is in men's hearts that he cares about. He loves you as he loves me. We have only to ask for forgiveness deep within ourselves and be welcomed back. You monkeys don't deserve redemption. It is my divine right to rule by his side, as an equal, or perhaps more than that. You would rather rule in power and might than to offer forgiveness and love. This is why you are cast out, unholy one. Are you about God with dare me? to challenge me? You will die for your blasphemy. Your soul belongs to me. Pointing. It's Satan. Is that not a little silly? The real mastermind behind these events, the fallen angel Satan, was cast to earth as punishment for his rebellion against God. He's been searching for a way to re-enter he heaven and crush the Almighty. The God Mask is said to bestow a power that is a key to God, a power that makes its wear God's vassal on earth, and Satan's manipulated Zobak and the other Lords of Shadow to acquire it for his own means. Satan has unimaginable power to wield on the earth and can use light and shadow to cast destructive spells or summon reapers from other planes. He is not able to command his full strength while chained to the earthly plane and thus remains weakened against heaven's chosen. Lord of the Dead. Zobek was a brave fighter and sage wizard, above all, wise above all others. He was a good man, loved in respect, with Cornilla and, Car uh, Cornilla, Cornell and Carmilla. He founded the order to which Gabriel belongs, the Brotherhood of Light. Pride drove him to seek more power to fight against the evil injustices he saw around him. He was corrupted by the desire to do good, and in the end, was punished for it. When his spirit ascended to heaven that fateful night, the empty corpse he left behind became the necromancer, an evil reflection of everything he represented. Lord of the Dead is death personified... Uh, and with his knowledge of the dark arts, none may stand against him, living or dead, besides Satan. God doesn't love you. He let your beloved die. So yeah, the final boss is uh, Satan. Kind of weird, huh? Still no Dracula. Well, we'll get to that though. I assure you. Surrender your weapon, and I'll show you mercy. Is doing anything for you? But yeah, I kind of like that even after all this, Gabe is still willing to say, no, God's good, though. You have been fooled, Gabriel. She is gone forever. Here come those necromancers. Only one of them blew for some reason. Is my magic just staying full? I think it is. Also didn't pan to eat you anything on account of the whole uh, having to hot swap our elements here. Beloved, die. 
impossible. Satan's dizzy, everyone. The power of God. That's kind of cool. I would like it if it was a little more spaced out evenly. Yeah, I love that. Fist fighting Satan in hell. And I've got the white wings and he's got the black wings. Oh man. I was a little too early on that button press. Very long game over. Shut up. Sorry, I'm getting I'm getting impatient now because I really do want to get back to that. Surrender your weapon and I'll show you mercy. Yeah, we just seem to get infinite full magic here, which is cool. I guess I'll use some of my items here. I mean, I don't know. It's got a whole face Surely button for it. Do that, Gabriel. It's got a lot of health is the thing. Impossible. There we go. That the power of God. That is a cool mechanic. I like I like swapping your stuff to walk through the barriers. I feel like this thing of actually having to use shadow magic for like a purpose has only come in in this chapter. And this is technically gameplay, so I can't skip this cutscene. I hope you guys like watching it a second time. Okay. Just don't screw it up. It's kind of weird that the best that Satan can think of is a uh, fist fight, you know? Maybe they're trying to do an end of Metal Gear Solid 4 thing. That's cool. That's actually really cool. All right, now we do phase two. Damn you, Gabriel! When Satan says damn you, does that mean anything or like... Because when people say god damn it, they're wanting god to damn things, you know? Die, but when people say Satan damn you, like... Isn't Satan like a thing? Isn't damning people his thing? Don't you need to... Is that like a, not a double negative? I will wipe the name of Belmont from this world forever. Oh no, he succeeded. That's why we don't get any Castlevania games anymore. You think you can defeat me? I mean, I don't really think that there's a good reason for me to defeat you. You're Satan and all. But I think that I will because this is a video game. Yeah, this mechanic feels like it only shows up in the last little bit. Granted, I'm glad that it isn't the whole game. Because then it too easily would have become Devil May Cry, Devil May Cry. Those who don't know, the ill-fated Devil May Cry reboot features a mechanic wherein certain enemies can only be attacked by certain weapons. Which means that you're forced to use specific weapons on these enemies. Alright, Satan, come on. Obviously, this does add a level of complexity to gameplay that isn't present in the other games. 
But it's kind of annoying to specifically have to use the uh, weaknesses of an enemy against it. Just a little bit, you know. Damn you, Gabriel! Um, and then there's another element like that in the God of War 4, which is weird because that's now like three reboots, or uh, uh, in God of War's case, it's a soft reboot, wherein you have, you know, color-coded elements that are red and blue. No! Stay back from me. Red, blue, blue, red, red. Cool. I feel like when you hit the grab button in front of a, a stunned enemy, I feel like you should grab them instead of just, like, stand there. Oh! <laughs> That's pretty high. Yeah, break it off. You can't pull that out. It'll, it'll take too hard. Oh, never mind. <laughs> oh! That's good! I like that! Literally like a Mortal Kombat grab. See, it's kind of wimpy. Like, he looks ripped, but he's just so skinny, you know? He's like an anatomical model. Like Da Vinci's skinned man. Alright. Take your hands off me, murderer. Your soul is damned. Oh, little rich Satan. I'm mercy for those that I have wronged. What I did, I did unknowingly. Yet I would change everything if I could. He isn't listening, Gabriel. Your fate is fixed. Every man has the power to repent. I have faith in that. Plus, killing Satan Forgive probably wins you points in heaven, right? Forgive me. My God. Such fun with your Marie. <laughs> I will introduce her to such pleasures. Her soul will go only to him. Once I have finished with you, Angel. Activating light magic while hugging a devil. The devil, in fact. That's cool. Well, everyone's secret master plan has just fallen apart, so... Life stream. My love. I do not want this. Why has my life been given back to me? It is your fate. You have been given back what was wrongfully taken from you. To repent your sins. To make amends. But without you? You freed them all. You saved us all, my Gabriel. I couldn't save you. I knew I could not tell you. Or despair would have eroded your resolve and everything would have been lost. I had faith in you, hoped that you would be strong enough to free the world, and you did not let me down. 
I am not worthy of your faith. Your love. I am nothing. You are a good man, Gabriel. You are as God intended. Fallible, yet capable of great things. I loved you then, as I love you now. I see before me a man who has regained God's favor, and who has my forgiveness, and the forgiveness of all the lost souls of this world. You have saved us all, and you have saved yourself. The mask is a powerful device. It allows us to see through God's eyes. Can it really bring the dead back? Yes. Look. <laughs> I don't I don't think that's how it works, guys. You have a mask on. It is too late for me, my love. I cannot come back. No. No, don't go. It is my time. The light is calling. I am not no. afraid. Please, stay. Stay with me. It's beautiful, Gabriel. So beautiful. It's calling to me. Calling. I love you, Marie. I love you. Remember when you killed me? Boy, if I have to forget, I have to if I have to be forgiven by everyone I've killed, this is going to be a long ending. I went through a lot of guys. What? She doesn't have her telepathy when she's dead. You'd think she'd double down on it. Okay, yeah, we should do the DLC. Ugh. Enrique Alvarez. Doing a lot of stuff on this. So, um... At the end of the day, it is still a Castlevania game, and... Well... Actually, I don't know. I don't know if it's right to say that. The reboot has so many things different from everything else. Like, for one, changing the whole Belmont lineage to Warriors of Light. And then Belmont is one generic Warrior of Light. And in the sequel, they try to do a little bit more of the Belmont lineage thing, but there's a lot of choices that I almost feel like are made in this sequel almost to be different for the sake of being different. You know? I don't really know if it's a if it's a, a good change or if it's just a change for its own sake, which is kind of weird. Um, it's certainly not a terrible game. The thing is, is that there are a great deal of really really weak choices made here a lot of the puzzle content a lot of the platforming content so much of that just really feels like Bratislava Symphony Orchestra wow a lot of it really feels as though there's just not enough substance and like what if we cut out every puzzle I feel like I spent like 10 hours doing puzzles 
How much have I... Oh, it's alphabetical. That's weird. Jason Isaacs was Satan, by the way. Jason's I, uh, Jason Isaacs, if you didn't know, is the guy who plays Harry Potter's dad's nemesis. He plays Lucius Malfoy. Nemesis's dad, rather. Dad's nemesis is Snape. Um, he plays Lucius Malfoy, and I think he also plays... Uh, Captain Hook in the 2004 Peter Pan movie. Uh, okay, yeah. I have been playing for 25-ish hours. I did some stuff off screen. I guess maybe not 10 hours of puzzle content. But, like, if this game was just a, a more classical just beat-em-up with really good controls and combat, I don't know. Would that have been better? But then there's a bunch of problems with the combat itself. Like, this interesting uh, color swapping mechanic that still isn't used that great. It wasn't that great in the game it initially shows up in, as far as I know, the, you know, D DMC reboot. When it shows up in this reboot, I don't know about it still. When it shows up in the God of War reboot, it still isn't that interesting, and I also, it's used in a, in a very sparing way. So it's kind of weird, you know? Um... So one thing is there's not any single one part of this game that is not without Miss Darth Paul. Cool. Uh, there's not any single part of this game that is without an eyebrow raised. Every single aspect of this game has something where you can sit down and say, well, hold on. Because the platforming is just uncharted stuff and it's a little padded and it's a little annoying and... It's not as good as it could be. And the combat has a bunch of... The combat is definitely the best part of it. But it has a bunch of weird choices made. It copies a lot from God of War. There's a whole bunch of mechanics that are really kind of... Meh, like, when you don't grab a guy or you mess up a grab, then you have to redo some of the fight, and that's overly punitive for no reason. Or some other stuff like that. Um... And then there's things like there, uh, uh, and then there's like having to actually suck up your your things. I know that they do that in order to give you the choice of where you're putting it. But on the other hand, it doesn't need to have an animation, you know. Andrew A bomb bomber sack, bombers back. Wow. There's a name. Um, Greek. So it's definitely not bad, but like everything, the puzzles, the combat, the story, even the music, there's not too many, um, there's not too many like iconic music themes that I can think of. You know, when you think about Castlevania, you can think of like Bloody Tears, you can think of the victory music from Castlevania 1. Oh, man. But yeah, suffice it to say, this is like a big 7 out of 10 game, I would say, you know? Where, like, everything has something up with it. having to charge the punch, you know?
tell you what, at the very least, this cutscene certainly takes a long time to happen. An unusual hiding place for the Prince of Darkness. Don't you think? Zobek. Yes, old friend. It is I. Where have you been all this time? Out there. Amongst the living. And what of you? Why have you been hiding all this time? Gabriel. What a twist. Don't you dare call me that. Isent Dracul. <laughs> Wow, you were Dracula the whole time. So yeah. No doubt. The game has kind of been building up to this. Were. But alas, look at you now. Hmm. A mere shadow of your former self. The mere moth-eaten robe shadow of your former self, by I. the looks of it. What do you want, old friend? Satan's acolytes are readying for his imminent return. He is unlikely to welcome both of us with open arms. Don't you think? Help me stop him. Or you and I will become his favorite pets. For all eternity. It is time to get out of this wretched tomb you have made for yourself. Stop skulking in the shadows. Don't you care that he will enslave you? Friend hug. Modern day, by the way. I'm pretty sure this is all Lords of Shadow 2 stuff, which I've not played. I know what it is you Because I know that Lords of Shadow actually takes place in the future. <laughs> kind of like uh, Arya, I guess, but not really. I cannot die. Yet. I cannot live. Help me. And I can free you of your immortality. But yeah, that's all Lords of Shadow 2 stuff, I think. The DLC, I believe, does cover how you become Dracula, but I never played the DLC. In fact, I didn't know it had one. <laughs> so yeah. In order to have a plot twist, you become Dracula. 
Now, there's a few things that kind of... Um, oh my god, that's stupid. <laughs> there's a few things that can clue you into this. Like, they mentioned that Gabriel is actually a scion of the... He may be a scion of the Corvinius family. Or Cronvist. Cornvkist. Something like that. Um, they mentioned that, like, yeah, they're pretty sure his 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 origin is from the Cronvis family, and that's actually Dracula's spoilers. That's actually Dracula's real name in um one of the Castlevanias. Uh, but yeah, I feel like they kind of blew it with Lords of Shadow Two by jumping ahead to modern day, and with how jarringly modern day appears there. That de I definitely agree with that. I definitely still think that. It's very weird that it's just, oh, by the way, it's now modern day. You would think that they would do something with that. Uh, so yeah, I've decided I will come back and play the DLC because I probably got it, you know? Um, s since they didn't really cover uh, the man himself becoming Dracula. But yeah, um, I commented on how conspicuous the lack of Dracula or even anything Dracula-like is. Like, a big scary dude with black magic and black hair showing up at the end is... That's Satan, but people... You would think that it's like, oh, is it finally Dracula? But, you know, in Japan, I mentioned this, these are not called Castlevania. They're called Devil's Castle Dracula. Akumajo Castle Dracula, I think. Um... And, like, to have a Castlevania game without Dracula is, like... Well, I'm trying to think of a really good example. It would be like a Shin Megami Tensei game without demons. Like, that's an essential element of the game. That's an essential part of it. That is that is the game. <laughs> that's the whole thing. Uh, so it's kind of weird that they would not have it. And, like, the only real vampire lord you fight is female further distancing her from Dracula, making it very, very hard for you to be like, oh, yeah, like Dracula for anything in this game. And the only one who's like it is Gabriel himself, of course. And the whole game has been him sliding further and further into, you know, villainy and craziness. This is my dagger, by the way. It's just sitting here. I don't know if anyone's thinking about that. I'll show it in another video. Um, Maybe I will. Uh, but it's a, uh, it's kind of a twist that kind of almost feels like a twist for the sake of a twist where they're like, oh, wouldn't it be cool if you were playing as Dracula the whole time? And then they change some stuff in the game to let you do that. But, eh, it's just kind of there, you know? It also makes it kind of difficult to talk about this game. And another thing, when you, when you fucking go look at the next game, it's like, play as Dracula, who's actually Gabriel Belmont, by the way. Hope you beat the first fucking game, because that's a massive spoiler. But yeah, I feel like this game could have had a bit more emphasis on the actual quest, almost to become Dracula. And I feel like it would have added a depth to the um, to the combat as well. because Or not the combat, to Gabriel's story. Because Gabriel kind of just has things happen to him. He doesn't really have too much in the way of thinking about things, of doing things. And that's a little unfortunate, because there's just not that much... And it would be a little cooler if, well, you know, that was a factor. Um, but yeah, at some point I will come back and play the rest of it. I do like Gabriel. Um, he's not my favorite Belmont, even in the reboot. Uh, and I think he's a little lame. But ultimately, this game is flawed in every way. Sorry. I know that that's a little, maybe a little harsh to hear, but that's how I feel. There's not a single part of this game that does not have something up with it. Um, but it was still a very fun game and a very good experience. And I don't know if I would recommend it, but hey, if you liked the playthrough, then that's, well, you know. Uh, but yeah, I am. The only reason I started playing this game was because it had been a while since I played a Castlevania. And I really wanted to play a Castlevania. But I did not have faith in myself to play Castlevania 3. I talked about this, but my my Castlevania 1 playthrough, I had to resort to cheats to beat the game. And my Castlevania 2 playthrough, I screwed it up and didn't get the good ending I wanted. So, 
I'm looking at Castlevania 3, which is even harder than the other two, if you didn't know. And I'm like, mm, mm, uh-uh. And uh, so I played this game because I just happen to have it on Steam. I don't know if I'll do Castlevania 3. I kind of want to talk over like a tool-assisted speedrun of the game. A glitchless speedrun. But, yeah. Castlevania 4 is a lot easier to play, though. A lot more fun as well, I think. Castlevania 4 is a lot of good stuff going for it. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's Castlevania, everyone. I hope you enjoyed. Um, I've been Alfred. I'll see you guys next time. <laughs> uh, I will play the DLC. I might have a little gap between then and now, but I hope you had a good time. I know I did. Hope you all have a good day. Bye, everyone. Have a good night.